In this video, we'll create this really cool 3D book turn effect, just like Iman Gadji's last video. A lot of you requested this effect, and I think it's a cool effect to use in your videos when you want to turn your page over. And if you want the project file of this video and more in-depth lessons, do join my masterclass. Link is in the description down below, and the link to the free assets that I've used is also in the description. Now, let's jump into it. Now, here in After Effects, I have a composition. I just created a full HD 25 frames per second. So just go to Composition, New Composition, and then let's just drag in all of our assets. There we go. Now, first we have this really cool table. I'm gonna move that down. I'm gonna turn everything off and let's just design our setting a bit. I'm just gonna scale this up a bit. So it's basically covering the full composition. Now I can change the quality to full so we can fully see what's happening here. I created this using AI with some prompts and I'm just gonna create a new solid. I'll make it black and just add it to it. And then I'm going to go to the ellipse tool and I'm just going to double click it. Now I'm going to double click the mask while holding control on Windows or command on Mac. I'm just going to drag this a bit down, something like this. And then I change the mask to subtract, press F for feather, and then I'm feathering by a ton, something like this. Basically to add a bit more atmosphere to the image. Now I'm going to create a new layer again a layer new adjustment layer i'm gonna add a tint to this and then you can also dial down the amount to tint and i'm gonna make the white to red something like that and again you can dial in the amount to tint maybe yeah i'm gonna do something like 70. i like that look now i'm just gonna check in a bit if i'm gonna put this adjustment layer over everything or if i'm just gonna put it on the background first our paper plane we have that here as you can see and basically i'm just gonna put this above the adjustment layer so it's white but it is under our vignette and i'm gonna move this over something like it this i'm gonna rotate it a bit and in the first couple seconds you see this fly over and I do this by just setting a position. So press P for position, setting a keyframe and go a bit further and then just move it through the frame, something like this. And let's see what this looks like. There we go. Maybe I'm going to rotate it a bit so it aligns to the path, something like that. And of course, add motion blur. There we go. That's cool. Now, later on, we can add some scales to the layer, but let's continue first with the book. And for the book, I have two layers now and I will use more later on. One is the page and the other one is the uh, the book itself. I think I'm going to drag this above the adjustment layer too. We can always add a tint to this book later on to blend it in a bit. So basically we have the cover and we have basically the pages. First, I'm going to make sure that they're both the same size and this will all make sense in a bit. I'm just going to change the opacity by pressing T to decrease it a bit so we can basically see if it's the same size, which as you can see, it's not. So let's scale the book up a bit and let's move the book down a bit. You can just do this with the arrow keys. If you hold shift and the arrow keys, it moves quicker. This is how I like it. Now I'm going to put the money page under our book. That's perfect. And I'm going to add a shadow. And the best way to do this is to just go to layer new solid, just make it black. And I'm just going to drag this under the book and the money page. And then I'm just going to use a rectangle tool. So hold your mouse down on the ellipse tool. And then we can just drag this out, something like this. Hold space to move this a bit, something like that. And then I'm just going to press feather to feather this out. Of course, you can also use a drop shadow effect, but for me, this is more clear. I just know that this is the shadow layer and it's not uh, hidden in one of these layers. So in my opinion, it's a bit more easy to control it this way. I can even press S for scale and scale it up a bit. Something like this, maybe. Press T for transparency to maybe decrease the transparency, but I think it looks quite cool. I think it's still a bit too big, but uh, we can adjust that later on. Actually, I'm going to uh, scale it down a bit and to make it easier for ourselves uh, we can even link everything now with the parenting so the shadow and the money page to the book and this basically makes sure that if we scale this down uh, everything will be scaled something like this so now we have the, our book in the middle and that's already cool i think this scene already looks quite cool right but now let's add the text i'm just going to go to the text tool and just drag a, basically like a small window, something like this. And then I'm just gonna type a five and then ways to become an editor. Now this font isn't great. Maybe I'm just gonna use the standard papyrus. Papyrus condensed, no, papyrus regular. And let's scale it down. I just want to make sure that the first sentence will fit on the uh, text or maybe I'm gonna scale it up something like this and I'm gonna uh, center the text and I'm gonna select the five and I'm gonna make that one really big 
to something like this. And then you can select the first sentence and basically add a lot of spacing. Or what you can also do is just hit enter a couple times to make sure that there's some uh, room between this. I like this. I'm going to uh, center it a bit. So I'm moving it down by uh, hitting the arrow key, something like that. Now that's cool. I'm just going to put this, of course, above the book. So then we have our text. We have the book. We have the money page. And this is exactly what we want. I'm now gonna duplicate the five ways to become an editor. I'm gonna drag that under our book and I'm gonna turn off the five ways and the book so it will change to the next page. Now the text is really unreadable. We just need to change the text color to black or maybe dark, uh, dark, dark gray, something like this. And we're gonna change this to one, always be learning. Then select the text and the money page and just duplicate it. And make sure that these are under the other layers. So basically under the first page. So we have our first page and then we have our second page. We turn our first page off. So we see our basically our second page. And then I'm gonna change the text and this is just rinse and repeat. Don't be too scared to ask. Again, duplicate, move it under it, turn them off, invest in yourself, duplicate it, move it below it, turn them off. Four, have a great portfolio. And five, subscribe to Tom's project. And then when you're done, the last page, and that's actually the back of the book. So I'm just gonna duplicate the first book that we had, basically our cover, the book cover, and I'm gonna move this under everything. I'm gonna turn that on, and this is gonna be the end. Now we're gonna turn on everything, uh, including the front too. So book, this front cover, and now the only thing we have to do is make sure that we pre-compose everything. And we do this by just selecting the front and pressing Command Shift C or Control Shift C on Windows. It will pop up the pre-composed window and we can, for example, also name it. So book cover, book front cover, then page one and so on. Now your composition should look like this. And now the most exciting part, we're gonna animate it. For which I'm gonna use the page turn effect, the CC page turn effect. It's a built-in plugin or build-in effect. You can just double click it while having the first one selected. Now I'm gonna change the controls to classic UI and then I'm gonna change the default direction to minus 90. And as you can see on your screen, you should have a basically a control thing. You can move this across the screen. And as you can see, it will turn the page over. Now let's say uh, we have default direction on minus 60 the standard setting, and we now move this control, and then you will see it will really turn over like a real page. And this can also be a cool effect. But for now, I'm gonna use minus 90. Let's keep the start point here. And then I'm just gonna set the keyframe for the fold position. I'm gonna move a bit over and I'm gonna hold shift while basically moving this parameter. And then we just need to make sure that when it's folded over, it's around, it's around here. So basically there's a bit of overlap. Now to press U to see your keyframes and let's play this for now. As you can see, way too quick. And I also, of course, want to select the keyframes and right click easy ease it. I'm gonna move it out a bit and let's play it again. It's already better. Let's move it out even further. Let's play it again. I really like this. And we can even go into the curve editor and basically making sure that it's even more smoothed so basically slows down a bit at the beginning and slows down a bit at the end. It's really nice. And of course, it's also a bit of personal preference. Maybe you want it really slow, maybe you want it really quick. Also, de also depends a bit on the timing of your video. Now, the cool thing we can do is just select the CC page turn effect, copy it by pressing Ctrl C on Windows or Command C on Mac. Now, if you hold Ctrl Shift or Command Shift on Mac and you press the arrow keys to the right, uh, we can time it a bit. So I'm just gonna do one, two, three maybe, or two, maybe two. Paste the CC page effect on the next composition, then hold Command or Control and press down arrow. So we go to our next composition and we can now do the same. So one, two, paste the effect, Control down. Now, one thing that you might have seen is that uh, the effect does a bit of a weird thing where it shows the back of the uh, first uh, book cover. And that's because we need to adjust something in the page turn. But by copying it over, it also copies over the back page and that needs to be set on the current layer. In this case, it needs to be on page one. In the next one, it's gonna be set on page two. And in the next one, it's gonna be set on page three and so on and so on. Except for the last one, actually. In that one, I do want the book back cover. And you will see why in a minute. So basically, as you can see, it will turn over, it will show the next one, it will turn over, it will show the next one, it will turn over, and so on and so on. 
Now we have our fold effect, but there is an issue as you can see. First of all, at the end, it will still show the back cover. We don't want that and we can just turn this off because since we're using this effect, we can turn the last layer off. Now what you also see is that basically it stacks under it and that's because of our layer order. Basically what we want is that once it's folded, the next one will be folded over it. And the best way to do that is going into the page one, pressing Command Shift D or Control Shift D on Windows. It will split the layer and then we can move it above the front cover. And what happens now when it gets folded, you will see that it will basically go over it. And that's exactly what we want. Now we do have to do that with every composition. So the best way to do this is by selecting all the compositions, pressing U to see all our keyframes. And then we just go to basically the last frame, last keyframe of page one. We go into page two, Command Shift D, and we just move it above the page one. Same with the next one. Uh, we go into page three, Command Shift D, move it above it. And we can do this quite quickly. And for the last one, we don't need to do it. What I do want is basically go into our last page. So that's page number five and turn the back opacity to 100%. There we go. Now let's see what happens here. I'm just going to play it quickly. And as you can see, we have this really cool effect. Now let's scroll and let's go through it. As you can see, page one, page two, page three, page four and page five. Subscribe to Tom's project. And then it goes into the last one. And of course, we also need to add a back to this, but we can easily do that by going into the book back cover. And here we have our book and we can add something to it. And for the back, I have this uh, simple image. It's a bit high res, but basically of a guy thinking. It's a cool silhouette. And I'm just gonna basically throw a tint on it. I'm basically gonna add a invert to this. And then I'm gonna change the blending mode to screen. And I'm just gonna scale it down a bit, maybe rotate it a bit, something like this, and maybe scale it up a bit. There we go. I'm gonna use a mask to cut him off or something like that. There we go. And then for the progress bars, of course, we need some icons, which I'm gonna skip for now, but I will add some progress bars to this. And we do this by just adding a stroke to a rectangle, maybe something like five, it doesn't have to be high. Then just dragging this out, maybe even lower, maybe even two or one. Ah, there we go. Let's move this over a bit, something like this. And I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna scale it down a bit by double clicking on the layer so we can get into the shape. Something like that. Change the stroke to none. Change the fill to white. This looks great. Now select the layer, go into the pen behind tool and then move this anchor point holding control on Windows or command on Mac. Then move that down until it snaps. And then we can use S to scale this up to a certain point. I'm just gonna set a keyframe, then move a bit back, unlink it and then set it to zero. And you can of course select the keyframes, easy ease them. And basically it will show a cool smooth animation. Turn the motion blur on. And of course we can now du duplicate this and then move this down. Press S for scale on our top layer here. And then of course I can adjust the keyframes, can move this over a bit, something like that. And then we have our cool progress bars. Now, of course we need to time this a bit with the page turning to make sure that it basically shows the bars coming up. But I think the timing is quite right. And now we have all our book layers and now we want to animate it. Now I would create a new null object to basically animate everything. And I would call this mover. Just select everything and I would create another null and would call it book book. And now we can link all our book compositions to the book, link the book to the mover and make sure that the background is also linked to our uh, mover. And now, for example, if we go into our mover, we can scale it up a bit, basically adjusting the camera, but we can also go into the book, press P for position. And then, for example, move the book over. Now, one thing I'm not the biggest fan of is this light, as you can see, but we can change that by going into our last page and changing the light direction to basically adjust the light, make it a bit less harsh. And we can even go into our fold position and move this over a bit and just make sure that all of our other layers are cut off. So I'm just going to select those, move to here, press Alt, right bracket, and there we go. And then if you adjust it a bit, you will get something like this. And what's cool is that you can reuse this project because you can just change the background layer, change the colors, and it will look completely different. Again, join my masterclass if you want more in-depth tutorials like this. Link is in the description down below. Don't forget to subscribe, and then I'll see you next time. Bye.